<laughs> nah, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna April Fool's you guys again, but the best starter in Kalos is finally here. So now you guys can finally stop asking me for it. Be be because it's here. It took you long enough. So yeah, who have I not collabed with yet? Let's see here. Oh, I know. I could call True Green. I know he loves me and my videos, so I'm sure he's probably up for it. One. Sky call later. Hey, Ron, man. How's everything going, man? How's the family? Is, that, is everything all good? Uh, That's great. I just have one quick question for you. Y you you want to collab, bruh? <laughs> yeah, right. What would you possibly want to collaborate on? Well, what about the best starter in Kalos? Why in the world would I want to do that? We all know Froki's gonna win. Everybody loves Greninja. There's no way Chespin or Fennekin's gonna win. I don't know, man. Fennekin and Chespin could surprise you. Hey, hey, shut up, okay? It could happen. Okay, I know you're just saying that, so I'll come on and collaborate with you. Yeah. Fine. Since you're honest, I'll help you out. Sweet. So, uh, of course there is no right or wrong starter to pick, but there definitely is a best Pokemon to choose that would benefit you the most. And in case you haven't seen the previous starter Pokemon videos, we will be looking at each important character's individual Pokemon and rate each starter's level of advantage or disadvantage on a scale of 1 to 5. 1 being totally disadvantaged and 5 being the best advantage. We'll take a look at stats, type matchups, moves, basically everything. And we don't just take into account the gyms in Elite Four either, we also take a look at rival battles and evil teams since they are both prominent and necessary in order to progress in the story. We should also mention that we will be adding more points the more times you have to battle an important character. For example, you battle Lysander three times, so we will be using the rating system for each separate battle and adding up the points from there. One more thing to add is that we will not be taking into account TMs either, cause well, there are just so many factors as to why it would derail this entire video. All of this should give us a good idea as to who the best starter in Kalos is. Just remember there are no real opinions here, so if your favorite starter isn't technically the best, then don't hate the player. Hate Arizo. He did the research, I'm just helping out. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. Wait, what are you doing? Um, well, to be frank, I'm just trying to brainwash your viewers into subscribing to my channel. I, I, th I thought you knew this by now. Oh yeah, good idea. Subscribe to my channel as well. And with that being said, let's get started. Okay, let's start off with the starter that I picked in Pokemon X, Chespin. So we're basically just going in order of the Kalos decks. Okay, so let's take a look at Chespin's strengths. This Pokemon is one of the more easier starts to the game and that's because of one move. Roll out. Let me explain. The first gym leader in the game is Viola, and as you guys know, she is a bug type specialist. And I know it may sound stupid saying Chespin has an easy time in the beginning considering it has to face all these bug types, but like I said man, roll out. It's pretty good. Plus, Chespin doesn't even have to worry about bug attacks because Viola only has one bug type move, being a very weak infestation. Her surf gets also part water, so Chespin's grass type attacks can do way more than expected. After that, though, it runs into a lot of problems throughout the rest of the gyms. It's not until Clement and his electric types that Chespin really gets a good advantage in battle. However, that's where most of Chespin's gym battle advantages end. But where Chestnut truly shines is when it goes up against Team Flare and your rivals. Since we will need more time to talk about Team Flare, let's take a closer look at the four rivals in the game. Shauna can give Chestnut a semi-difficult time, but most of the moves she has on her team are non-stab, so there isn't much to worry here. Tierno would be the next rival you face, and he is one of the easiest matchups for Chespin. The reason being that his starter is a core fish. Plus, on her final team, the only Pokemon you have to worry about is Talonflame, because while yes, Roserade is a poison type, the only move it can use is Petal Dance. There's also Trevor, and although he may look like a pushover, he's actually the second most difficult rival Chestnut has to face. This dude ends up with a Raichu that has Nuzzle, which will be annoying. There's also Aerodactyl with Sky Drop and Florges with Moonblast. But out of all the starters, Chestnut does have a better chance against Trevor. And last, but certainly not least, we have the main rival of the game, Serena or Callum. The first battle is honestly not as hard as you think it would be. For starters, she has an Absol, which is neutral at this point, a Meowstic, which again is neutral, and of course, a Brakeson. But as its fire
fire move, Brixen only has fire spin, which is a base 35 damage. I'm not saying that Aquiladin would take out a Brixen, but with a move like that, you're giving him a chance. But as time progresses, her team gets harder and harder. You gotta deal with Meowstic's psychic attacks, Altaria, and Delphox is just a real pain in the neck. But what can you really expect from a rival? Now Arizo, what makes Chespin so great against Team Flare? I mean, they have Flare in the name, so fire types must be an issue, right? Well, the new fighting dual type Chestnut receives actually comes in serious handy against Team Flare. Let's start with the Grunts. As you guys know, the Grunts like to use a lot of dark type Pokemon. That means you will have to face a lot of Lipards, Mightyenas, and Houndooms. And aside from Houndoom, Chestnut would be the go-to starter to take care of those Pokemon. There are also a surprising amount of electric type Pokemon, and although Chestnut can't hit it with super effective attacks, it does resist the type which can be useful. There are also the Team Flare admins, which are essentially just grunts with a bit stronger Pokemon. They have the same types of Pokemon that grunts do, dark and electric, but now with more of a focus on poison types as well, which can be a slight problem for Chestnut. Uh, never mind, it's a big problem. Moving on though, let's talk about the most important members of Team Flare, the scientists. The first of them that you meet is Aliana. Her Pokemon aren't at all a problem for Chestnut. The next Team Flare scientist you have to face is Bryony. I like her a lot. Mostly because she's green, but also because her Pokemon get creamed by Chestnut. After that, you have to go through Celosia, who is a bit more difficult. On her team, she's rocking a Manetric with Flamethrower and a Drapion with Poison Jab, so you may run into a few problems there. And finally, the last and probably most difficult scientist Chestnut has to face is Zero Sick. The reason why I say this is because Chestnut literally can't do anything to his team. Like... Seriously, just just look at it. And that's kind of the end of Chestnut's advantages. He also can't really do a lot to Lysander's team. Hitler Wolverine here wants to be a special snowflake, so he doesn't have a team consisting of one type like most of the other evil team leaders. But in our final battle, Lysander's team becomes a little easier to face because his Gyarados can now Mega Evolve, making him really weak to Chestnut. And remember how we talked about how Chestnut runs into a lot of problems against the gyms? Well, yeah, we should probably go over that. Let's start off with Grant. His first Pokemon Amora has a killer ice type move being Aurora Beam, but you should be able to get through Amora because surprisingly enough, this fat tub of lard is actually faster than Amora. But Tyrant's dragon typing will unfortunately make Quilladin's grass moves neutral. Now if Quilladin had that fighting type, this would be a very different story, but you won't get that until you're a chestnut. Next up, we have Corina, who is a rather interesting character because she's the only gym leader that you battle more than once in this game. The first time you come up against her is in Geosense Town, and she's toting two Lucarios. Again, at this point in the game, you just have a Quilladin, so you can't directly do anything against Lucario. And after a couple of power-up punches, this Pokemon can be a problem. Like, like a real problem. Run, Quilladin! Run! Run away, you chubby hedgehog! What's funny though is that Karina really focuses on Lucario and how it can Mega Evolve, but in the gym, Karina doesn't even use one. Like, what the f***, man? Well, either way, her Halucha's Flying Press will literally end Quilladin's life and erase Chestnut from existence. Basically, Halucha is the Grim Reaper of Chestnuts. And if you think the pain stops there, then you're right. Just kidding, you're incredibly wrong. Aside from Clement, the entire rest of the gym leaders are just not a whole lot of fun for Chestnut. Ramos has Jump Luff and Weeping Bell. Valerie has special attacking fairies, Olympia has powerful psychic types, and Wolfric has faster ice types. Like we said, gym battles are not Chestnut's strong suit. But after the gym battles, it's finally time to take on the Elite Four, and to put it lightly, it does not have a very good time. The only good matchup that he has is against Seabold, and half of his Pokemon could actually counter it back. All the other members are just too much for Chestnut to handle. There's Malva's fire types, Dresna's dragon types, and Wickstrom's steel dual types that can easily counter Chestnut. And don't even get me started on Diantha. J j just look at that team. J Ugh. So as you can see, Chespin does have some clear weaknesses in gym battles. But when it comes to repeated battles like Rivals and Team Flare, Chestnut is actually pretty good there. But you know who is good at gym battles? This sack of cuteness. Yeah, you're right, Fennekin is surprisingly the most consistent out of all the starters in gym and Elite Four battles. It starts off great against Viola, can handle Karina in both battles even if it's not a Delphox, destroys Ramos, goes even with Clement, is the only starter that can actually handle Valerie, and has no problem with Wolfric. The only problems that Fennekin has are with Grant and Olympia. Fennekin also has a much easier time than Chespin against the Elite Four. It has no problem with Wickstrom, is at pretty much a stalemate with Malva, a 
aside from Chandelure, and, well, Delphox struggles with the other two Elite Four members for obvious reasons. But Delphox definitely has the best chance out of all the starters against Diantha. The only Pokemon it has to worry about are Tyrantrum, Gudra, and some non-stab moves. The rest, Delphox can either counter or just straight up beat. But where Delphox really struggles is actually where Chespin really shines. It has by far the worst matchup against Serena, struggles with Tierno's Crawdunt, does alright against Trevor, and struggles with two of Shauna's Pokemon. And remember how we talked about Team Flare's dark types? Well, I think it's more than obvious that those are going to give Delphox some serious trouble. Yeah, the focus on dark types really hurts Fennekin here. And it's not just the grunts, the entire faction itself puts a giant focus on dark type Pokemon. Aliana, Bryony, Mabel, Celosia, Zerosic, even Lysander, and he has a freaking Mega Gyarados. Yes, they do also put a focus on poison types too, but again, there are more dark types than any other type on Team Flare. Yeah, Team Flare is definitely not fun for Delphox. Well, I guess all that's left to talk about is the last daughter of the three, Froakie. And unlike Fennekin, Froakie thrives against Team Flare, just like Chespin, except maybe a little better. Froakie can take out a lot of Team Flare's Pokemon besides the electric types, of course, but Greninja can definitely handle the more common types among Team Flare, especially those pesky Houndooms. I think what really works out in Greninja's favor is that it doesn't really have to worry about taking super effective hits. Like with the Team Flare Scientist, the only one Greninja really has to worry about is Celosia's Manetric, which Greninja can also outspeed. Besides that, there's little to no threats besides the occasional non-stab bug moves. Sometimes just being neutral with everything is good enough. And finally, there's Lysander, and out of everyone on his team, the only Pokemon you have to worry about is Mian the rest of the Pokemon are either weak to it or just stay neutral. But Greninja is not without its weaknesses as well. Like Chestnut, this valiant shinobi frog struggles with gym leaders too. In fact, from Karina to Valerie, it gets completely destroyed. That's basically the entire mid-game. You do get a break with Olympia, but it's right back to being annoying once you get to Wolfric and his Obama Snow. But at least with the Elite Four, it's not as bad as it is in the gyms. It does well against Malva and Wickstrom, but pretty much against everyone else in the champion, he struggles. But is the struggle with the gyms in the Elite Four enough to completely derail Greninja from the conversation? I guess the only way to find out is to tally up the points. So after tallying up all the points, the definitive best starter in Pokemon X and Y is... Froakie. Hey, I thought you said Fennekin and Chespin had a chance. Uh, yeah, and they did. Never said one of them was gonna win, though. You know, I'm not even mad. This just confirms what we all assumed from the very beginning. Well, yeah, but let me explain. What Froakie had that the other starters just didn't was speed. Because when you're in a matchup where both sides have super effective moves, most of the time the faster Pokemon will win. Chestnut has no speed, and Delphox may have a little speed, but it's nowhere near Greninja's. But that's obviously not the only thing. Where Delphox went wrong is that in the reoccurring battles like Team Flare and the Rivals, it struggles a lot. But in the battles that you only have to fight once, like gym battles, Delphox excels in. But since you have to fight Team Flare and the rivals more than one time, in a sense they do become a bit more important because they are going to be a reoccurring problem. But if this was just about gym battles in Elite Four, then Fennekin would be the clear-cut winner. Yeah, that's definitely interesting to know. And I can see where Chestnut fell flat. It followed the same pattern as Greninja, being strong against Team Flare and the rivals, but unfortunately for Chestnut, Team Flare loves to use Houndoom. And since Houndoom is faster and is a special attacker, there is no way Chestnut is going to beat Houndoom. So basically, Greninja did Chestnut's job a bit better. Yep. In the end, the biggest factors to Greninja's win are its unmatchable speed and its neutralities with Team Flare. The best starter in Pokemon X and Y is Greninja. Okay, now that we know which starter is the best in Kalos, I think I'm gonna ask an even greater question. What is the best Pokemon generation? But first we gotta figure out how to determine such a thing. So why don't you guys click the annotation on the left to go watch that video on True Green 7's channel. And if you guys are here from Ron's channel, then why not check out the video on the right? It's pretty good. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time.